Hey, hi everyone. My name is Jerry Wise and I'm the founder of Jerry Wise Relationship Systems. And I've been working with folks for 40 plus years, helping them with self-differentiation. And I've always had a very significant interest in inner child work. And uh, I've got about 100, 230 videos on YouTube. I hope you'll join this channel and subscribe. Today, I have the privilege to interview my guest, Dr. Margaret Paul. She is an author of several best-selling books. She's a psychotherapist and co-creator of The Inner Bonding, A Self-Healing Process. Her books include Inner Bonding, Do I Have to Give Up Me to Be Loved by You, and Healing Your Aloneness many of which I recommend to clients to read. She's a noted public speaker, a workshop leader, educator, chaplain, consultant, and artist. She has appeared on many radio and TV shows, including The Oprah Show, and she holds a doctorate degree in psychology. And I wanna thank you for joining me today, Dr. Paul. Thank you, it's my pleasure. There's some things I wanted to ask you about today because I had some mm. questions and if I had an opportunity, mm. I was going to ask you. Good, great. And this is my opportunity, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> and uh, well, when I began doing th my own therapy decades ago, which I've probably been doing therapy ever since, um, you know, I wasn't really happy with the results and, and, and I then stumbled onto Bowen Family Systems Theory and I stumbled onto inner child work. And those seem to help me the most and make the biggest changes in my life. And so having been, an, uh, an, having had that strong interest in that I found that it was personally helpful for me, that's what I bring to my practice when I work with other people. How and when did you begin to see inner bonding and inner child work was so important for recovery and healing? Well, I was working as a traditional psychotherapist for 17 years. And like you, I had had a ton of my own therapy and I wasn't happy with my own results or the results of traditional psychotherapy. And that's when I started to actually pray for a process, something, a teacher, something that would come in and offer a, a process that would really work so much better, work faster, work deeper, that people could actually do on their own instead of always having to be dependent on going to somebody. That's when I met the co-creator, Dr. Erica Chopich, and she had half of inner bonding. I had half of inner bonding. So of course we had to meet. And, um, and we put this together with the help of our, our higher guidance. And um, that was 36 years ago. It's been evolving for the past 36 years into an extremely powerful self-healing mind, body, spirit process that's very different than traditional psychotherapy. And it's what's worked for me. It's what's worked for, I think, millions of people around the world at this point. And so I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Wonderful. And I think uh, we have a, a similar background that way. And I worked as a traditional psychotherapist, a marriage and family therapist and social worker and all those trainings for doing that. And then I had to find out what really worked. Right. And the um, uh, and I know, like you, I was looking for something that I could do for myself. Right. Uh, not that I don't need help or don't need uh, uh, outside observations or, you know, it's not that I don't need to talk to someone, but it was something. How can I continue on that process? Uh, and self-supervision, we might say, in the therapy world or self-healing. Uh, Right. And the and I found Bowen Family Systems was a, a help to me to get that I could begin to coach myself in differentiation and in the inner child work, I could begin to do the healing and coaching for myself uh, to be a more of an adult and more of a connected adult, right. connecting my feelings, inner child and my inner adult. And, and that I could carry that on whether I was seeing someone or not. Right. And exactly. that, that I wasn't dependent on 
therapy. Why is bonding with ourselves and loving ourselves so critical for healing? Well, the problem is, is that if we're, if we're not loving ourselves, if we're not taking responsibility for our own feelings and our own needs, then what we're doing is abandoning ourselves. And just like with an actual child, if you're not paying any attention, if you're not listening, if you're not taking care of their needs, they're going to feel abandoned, they're going to feel unlovable, and they're going to act out in some ways. And so what happens with us is, first of all, we end up feeling unimportant, unlovable. And then what happens in our relationships is we end up trying to have control over getting somebody else to take care of our feelings and needs. And we go into all sorts of controlling behavior. As, as you know, we get angry, we give ourselves up, we withdraw all kinds of manipulations to try and get somebody else to take care of that inner child. That's our, our, our feeling That's self. Our, um, right. Yeah, and so um, then of course we, we come together with people at our common level of self-abandonment or our common level of self-love. So if we're abandoning ourselves, we're gonna meet somebody who's, who's abandoning themselves. They're gonna expect us to take care of them. We're gonna expect them to take care of us. We create a codependent relationship that doesn't work. And then and you so, make money for the marriage and family therapist. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and, and so when people learn to take care of themselves, take care of their feelings, learn to listen inside is what we teach in inner bonding, uh, to listen, to understand the false beliefs that we're coming from, to develop that loving adult. It's also a spiritual process, learning to access a higher source of love and truth and wisdom. As people practice this, they develop new neural pathways in their brain for the loving adult, like you were talking about. And we, we get better and better at, at taking care of ourselves and, and, and actually filling ourselves with love. And when we learn to do that, we get sort of overflowing with love to share with others. And when two people are loving themselves, bonding with themselves and getting filled up with love, then they have love to share with each other. And that's what a great relationship is. That's where it's fun, where it's intimate, where it's learning, where it's growing. When we have love to share, rather than always trying to get love, when we're abandoning ourselves, we're always trying to get love. That is what doesn't work. And then we get addicted to love. Well, we get addicted I to mean, trying to get it. I mean, addicted to yeah, trying yeah. to get to love, right? Yeah, yeah we get addicted right. to trying to seek it. That's right. And we think that that's the best feeling because if somebody gives us a little bit of love, like a little bit of sugar, oh boy, it feels great for the moment. I, this tastes so good. Right. But then we until have until I need some more. Uh, that's why I need more and more and more. Which is not more. lying. It never fills. It 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 only feels good for the moment. And so when we learn to love ourselves. And, and, and really take responsibility for our own feelings, we get full inside. And that's where, that's where the joy is. That's where the creativity, the aliveness, that's where it is. And I know as you've talked about a higher power, you've mm -hmm. talked about God. I know uh, my beginnings in getting psychotherapy and learning, uh, you know, how do I become, as a Christian pastor many years ago, you know, how do I, how do I be a self, you know, as a, as a Christian? Well, I didn't like myself. I didn't know myself. I didn't know my inner child. I didn't even hardly know my inner adult. Um, they were all mixed up in a messed up or disconnected way, as you would right. describe. And, and I just thought that just, then I end up not loving myself, loving others, in the way I want to love others or right. in connection with my higher power. Right. And so that was a goal for me that there's got to be a way to do this. That, well, what do you say to those who say, oh, but, but I have the love of God. I have the love of God. I don't, I don't need all this. Yeah. God loves um, me. Yes. But most of the people that I work with who have said that, they don't actually have a relationship with God. They're, they're using their higher powers as what I call a spiritual bypass, where, oh, I'll just let God take care of me, and then I don't have to take care of myself. And, and God, God, is, God is spirit. God, God can't come in and do it for us. God can't take action for us. So, you know, for example, you have a baby who's crying and is hungry. Do you say, God, come feed the God, baby? God, come feed the baby, right. Yeah, no, 
Because uh, he can do baby. anything. Right. No, but you feed the baby. And, 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 and the same analogy as far as trying to get somebody else, like you have a baby. Is it easier to go around the neighborhood, knock on doors and try and get somebody else to feed the baby? Or is it easier for you to feed the baby? <laughs> and so people right. say, well, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too much work. It's way easier than trying to get somebody trying else to get to God or the neighbor. That's right. To That's feed right. The baby. That's right. And the, uh, I know I think about the, um, with uh, that love of what I found was I could experience more love from God or my higher power if I was connected to me. Well, that's the thing is that we have to be open to it. You know, th that whatever people conceptualize as God, however they see that, it's here all the time. That energy of love and compassion and wisdom and truth, it's here all the time. It can't leave us. We can leave our higher power. Our higher power cannot leave us. And so uh, um, when we have to be available, we have to be open. Our heart has to be open. And, and a couple of things that I have found about this, because I really struggled with connecting with my higher power because I came from an atheist family. And in my family, God wasn't even allowed. My father would say, anybody who, you know, who, who thinks God is there is just using that as a crutch. So, so it wasn't even allowed in my house. A category, an option. Yeah, right. But I was a very spiritual kid and, uh, and it got squashed. But, you know, fortunately, I, I tuned into it. And I started to search for a way to have that connection all the time. Not just, you know, I, I had it happen at times, sort of out of nowhere and it felt great, but I wanted it all the time. And so I really went on a search as to what, what enables us to stay connected with our higher power throughout a day and receive that love and that comfort and that wisdom and that guidance. And I discovered two things. Um, first of all, I, I discovered that that spirit exists at a higher frequency than we operate at. We're, we're, we're at a lower frequency, we're denser so that we can see each right. other. If we were operating really fast like that, we couldn't see each other. So spirit operates higher. And so we have to raise our frequency in order to access that, that level. And, and of course, love, Ooh, has like a very, yeah, love has a very high frequency. So the two things that I discovered is that one is, um, one of the basis of inner bonding is intention. And that at any given moment, you're either in the intention to control, to, to, to get love, to, to avoid pain, um, or you're in the intention to learn about what's loving to yourself and to others. So when we move into the intention to learn about loving ourselves, our heart opens and our frequency goes high. It's, it's not the intention to learn about like the lottery numbers. It's very specific about learning about loving ourselves that raises our frequency. So when I started doing this, um, one of the things that, that happened is that um, I, I was a very sickly kid and, and early in my 20s, I started reading about how to be healthy. And I, at that time, threw everything out of my kitchen, went on to all organic food, local, healthy, just a really, really healthy diet, which I'd been doing for a long time when I started practicing interbonding. So when I open to learning, when I under, finally understood, if I open to learning about loving myself, I can connect. Wow, suddenly that connection was there. And I thought, oh, I just have to teach my clients to open to learning and they'll connect, except it didn't happen that way. And so then I started to look at, well, what was going on? And I realized it's not what's just- What's missing? The, yeah, what's missing? It's not just the frequency of our thoughts, it's the frequency of our body. And when we're putting junk food, in our body, and, and, and this is, you know, this is the title of one of my recent books, Diet for Divine Connection, Beyond Junk Food and Junk Thoughts to Atwell Spiritual Connection. When we have the junk thoughts, we're putting ourselves down, we lower the frequency, and when we eat junk food, sugar, processed food, food full of pesticides, factory farm food, all that junky stuff, our body's frequency becomes very low. It makes it very hard to access our guidance. And so I had an easy time because I've been eating well for so long. And then when I moved into the intention to learn, wow, it was just, it was just so really easy. connected, yeah. really connected and connected whenever I 
want to. I can ask and receive, have a two-way two -way communication with my higher guidance. So that's what I teach people to do now. And you mean we're supposed to take care of our bodies as Hi. well as our inner self and Hi. as well as... And I read in your book, which I've said many times, you know, some and many people have told me, well, selves aren't something to be cared for. Uh, well, right. many people learn that. I mean, many people learn that. That was not something you were teaching. I'm just saying, right, right, right. Yourself is not something that's supposed to be cared for because we didn't learn that. We learned the self was not something to be cared for. Well, in Our fact, we learned that it was selfish learned. to and care it was for selfish. Us. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And so that's what I learned. Yeah. And so I just kept trying to ignore self, ignore inner child, ignore inner adult, and try to do the right thing. Right. And it just didn't work. No, it doesn't and work. So, there's, so your book presents good news. Right. No, and we, and, we, and we try and do the right thing in order to get something back. See, and that, you know, mm -hmm. love, love is, does not have an agenda. Love does not have somebody else's approval, somebody else's love attached to it. So if we're giving in order to get, which what I did for years as, as a caretaker, I was giving what I thought was love, but then upset when I didn't get it back in the way that I thought I was giving it. See, so then it becomes another way to control. Well, and that's why I wanted to ask you, how are good behaviors we've been taught praise, niceness, helping others, caretaking, how do they have a dark side? Well, see, we know the upside. Oh, I'm yeah. being nice. I'm being good. I'm be, I'm praising other people. I'm right. But it depends upon the intention. And this is where intention is so important because everything comes from our intention. So if our intention is to control, to, to, to get approval, to get attention, to get love, then being nice and doing good things is just another form of control. Whereas if our intention is to be loving to ourselves and, and we learn to fill ourselves with love from our higher power and bring it in and take care of ourselves, which actually is the opposite of selfish, it's self-responsible to fill ourselves with love to share, then when we're giving and we're, we're offering, we're, we're being nice, we're being caring, um, we're doing it from a full heart with no agenda. And the actual energy of it feels completely different. It's like sometimes, sometimes, it does. yeah, sometimes I'll work with a couple who, let's say they're, they're having uh, sexual problems where he wants to have a lot more sex than she does. And she'll say, you know, uh, I don't know what to do when he brings me flowers. And I know he's bringing me flowers to butter me up and get me to have sex with him. And it feels awful. See, whereas if he was really taking responsibility for himself, he was in his power, he was coming to share love and he gave her flowers, it would feel great. Yeah, so it's it, different. The, yeah, the intention it, it, right. and the motive is key. And yeah. that's what I've said a lot about codependent behaviors. Co behaviors that are codependent can be very normal and very healthy, but with the wrong motive, those behaviors become dysfunctional that's right uh, as a codependent that's right yeah so as a codependent they're, they're controlling uh they're right. trying to get love back and they're coming from an empty place because when we abandon ourselves when we're not taking care of that inner child we're not taking care of our feelings um then we're feeling empty inside we've got like a black hole inside and then we're taking care of somebody else so that they'll fill that black hole well, people don't like to be controlled. Nobody likes to be controlled. So, so when somebody is, is trying to get love, the other person will likely pull back, withdraw, shut down. And then you wonder, why is this happening? You know, I'm being so nice. I'm being so loving. Why are they so shut down? But they're picking up the energy they of the sense, manipulation. They yes. sense the intention. That's right. Even they though do. they can't describe it, even that's though they right. might not be able to identify it, they still sense, and that's, in a Bowen family systems, that's the emotional field. Right. The emotional field is contaminated with this urge to push or pull rather right. than just be yourself. And well, so that's I'm doing right. these things to push and pull. Right. And, 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 to be me. 
Yeah, and very often, you know, somebody with um, an anxious relationship style who's got this fear of abandonment um, will meet somebody with an avoidant relationship style who's got a fear of engulfment. And so the one who's afraid of abandonment is going to be clutchy, jealous, you know, angry, just, you know, trying to control in a lot of ways. Pursuing. Yeah, and pursuing. pursuing, right. And the other one is going to feel engulfed, controlled, smothered, and they're going to withdraw from that. And that's a very, as you know, a very, very common very system. Common and, problem. Yeah. Well, if each person does their inner work, if they, if they practice inner bonding, they start to take care of their feelings, they develop their loving adult, they develop their spiritual connection, they learn to make themselves secure on the inner level, then they would be in a position to not take rejection personally, which is what the loving adult learns to do, not take it personally, not get so hurt, right. and to set limits against being controlled and smothered and engulfed. And so we heal those fears of rejection and engulfment as we practice inner bonding and develop that loving adult and spiritual connection. And the um, and those vibes that we send out then change, right? And it becomes the system becomes more calm, and the system becomes more, as you say, loving and connected. Well, we than, hope it's yeah. always a game, right? Right, right. We hope when, when I work with, you know, like one end of a couple, one person, and they say, well, you know, what's going to happen if I really stop caretaking this person or stop trying to control them and start to love myself? And I say, well, I don't know. You know, it could get right. a whole so, lot better and it could get a whole lot, get worse, a lot worse. But at least we're you're changing the system, right? Yes, we're and one you're going to know. Yes, one person changes the system. And right. so then you'll know, like somebody says, should I leave my relationship? And I say, well, you haven't done your work yet. You know, right. do, deal, deal with your end of the system. Deal with your manipulative controlling behavior first. Deal with learning to love yourself and stop abandoning yourself and then see what happens then in see. the in the relationships. I mean, unless there's violence, unless well, there's, you know, abuse. Course. Yeah, of course. And the um, I've even told couples, you know, I hope that you can get healthy enough to divorce. <laughs> yeah. Which means do your work and then decide what you right. want to do with the relationship. Don't just take the push and pull and then go, okay, I'm going to get out of it now. Right, right. Because, because then you're just no going to go to another. There's no learning. Exactly. There's no learning. And of course, I'm sure you, you know, as long as you've been working, I've been working for over 50 years. You see it happen over and over oh, and good. over. Good. I hope you're older than I am. I, I am older than you. <laughs> and I want somebody to be older than me. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Doing that work and learning is what's so important. Uh, versus just the status of the relationship. Right, right. And Definitely. you can all, I said, if you get healthier, you'll find out what you should do. That's right. Because they keep right. asking me also when I was practicing in marriage and family, they keep, do you think we should divorce? I'm like, how, how would I know? Yeah, that's I mean, right. I'm not in a relationship with you. I can only deal with my relationships. Right. And, uh, yeah. but I would advise you to do your work, then you will know. Yes, then you will know. And, that, and that's what happened for me because I was in a 30-year marriage and I was the caretaker through most of the marriage until I got really sick. You know, it makes you sick Which, to abandon yourself. You can't do it forever. Codependency <laughs> and caretaking can be deadly. Yeah, and, 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 and at some point, my inner child said to me, how sick do I have to make you before you start taking care of me? And I got the message. That was at the beginning okay. of, of, of inner bonding. But then, you know, it's wow. scary. It's scary to start to take care of yourself when you're in a long relationship. And I, it was very scary for me to think, oh, my God, maybe the people who say they love me don't. If I really take care of myself instead of take care of them, That's the fear. you know, what, what, what's going to happen? And, and I had to make a decision wow. that I was willing to lose everybody else. But I was no longer willing and to lose me because I was going to die. And we were using them to um, bolster yeah. our sense of wellness and who we are and that we're worthy. And that, that's right. And but so it they're holding working. us up, but it, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't, doesn't ultimately work. work. But no. we use them. 
so if I detach or if I start working on my issues, well, then they might not be happy with me. And that's how I've been living all these years. Right. And so I had, I mean, it took a lot of courage for me. I had to say, okay, if I end up alone, if I lose everybody, I'll be okay. And if I get hurt, I'll be okay. I have to be willing to be okay. hurt. I have to be willing to lose everybody. And in fact, that is what happened. It was the hardest time of my life because I'd been such a good caretaker, you know, mother earth to everybody. And so my husband was mad. My kids were mad. My parents were mad. My parents actually disowned me. I mean, it was a really, really tough time, but you know what? I got well and I got me and I got my aliveness and I got my creativity and I got my health. And so even though I had to deal with finding out that the people who said they loved me really didn't, although uh, two of my three kids kind of came back in, um, I benefited enormously. Well, it, it clears myself. the table. It clears yeah. the table and you know who really loves you. That's right. And who can't. That's right. You know, who can't. Who doesn't, who can't. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or who's not willing to or do not what willing. they need to do to, to get there. You know, you, you have a system that, that you agreed to at the beginning. You change the agreement. It might not work anymore. And you have to be prepared for that. When I was a pastor, not only was I feeling like I should take care of my family, my family of origin, my, and then I added everybody in the church. Yeah. So I'm taking care of everybody in the universe, and then I'm supposed to get everybody in the universe saved. Okay. So that's that was my uh, task to caretake the whole earth, and that got pretty heavy. It's a big burden. It's a big burden, especially if you're not a higher power. That's right. Uh, it's, it's a very big burden. <laughs> yeah, well, you, I mean, I'm sure you know that ego wounded part of us likes to think we're a higher power. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, that was very important. I felt so low that I needed to feel as though I was powerful. Right. And when really I didn't realize how much I was powerless, but that I did have empowerment over me, which I did not see. Well, and, that, and that's such an important issue, Jerry, because you know, when, when we're infants, we don't have any power over ourselves and we don't have any power over others. And if we cry, they don't come, we could die. And so the fear of being helpless and powerless over other people is, it, it is old and deep. And, and one of the things all of us need to learn is how to, how to really compassionately manage the true helplessness over other people that we don't have control over others and we don't have control over outcomes, but we have, but now, unlike being an infant, we have control over ourselves. And that is where we are powerful. And, and my experience is, is when I accepted my powerlessness over others, I became empowered to take care of me. And so we transform powerlessness from bad news to good news. That's right. That's right. And that's where a real transformation happens. That's right. Uh, when I can actually see powerlessness as a good thing and surrender, and that now I somewhat know more of my place in the universe rather than this big, big place that I can't even manage because I can't even manage me. Right. And now I'm trying to manage and caretake everybody else. Yeah. And, and then, of course, we're frustrated because they're not doing what we want them to do. They don't. I don't know why they didn't do what I wanted <laughs> I know. them to do. I, I praised them. I gave to them. I <laughs> bled for them. I. Why couldn't yeah. I fix them and change yeah, them and make yeah. them happy? Yeah, if only they listened to you. If yeah. only they would listen to me. <laughs> right. Well, I wasn't even listening to me. That's right. That's right. So how do I expect others to? Yeah, and people don't realize how deeply empowering it is to shift, to really accept the truth. And that is, we don't have control over other people and we don't have control over outcomes, but we do have control over our own intention, in fact. And that is the, um, the ultimate of free will, is, is being able to choose our own intention to love ourselves or to try and control everything else. And that's what changes everything when we shift our intention. And that shifting of intention is so huge. And a lot of people struggle right at that 
point. That's right. Am I going to intend this? Am I going to intend to love me? Am I going to intend? Because so many struggle right at that juncture. That's right. And they know, have, can and I they, shift that intention? Well, and they have a lot of false beliefs about that. Like I can't do it and I'm not worth it. I'm not good enough. It's not my job. My parents didn't do it for me when I was little. So somebody else is supposed to do it for me now. It's not fair. Why should I have to do that? They don't realize the power in it. They don't realize how joyful it is. How, what a freedom, it's, what a freedom it, it is to take care of ourselves, which we couldn't do very well when we were young. Now we have the freedom to do this and the power to do this, which I mean, that's what opens us to who we really are, to our creativity, to our, our true work and to intimacy with others, to be able to share our heart and soul with others, which we can't do when we're trying to control them. I say often, and I think I have a video or something it's titled, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Right. Yeah. And I, uh, and, and the people go, well, my childhood's gone. And I'm going, oh, no, no, no. Your, your child, your inner child will live the rest of your life with you. Right. It's exactly. never too late to have a happy childhood. You can have a happy childhood now. Yeah, that's right. When we listen to ourselves. When we listen to ourselves, exactly. And we can reparent ourselves. And I think Re that's a part of the message that you have as well. Yeah, so to take action, to take action for <clears throat> ourselves, not, not to wait for somebody else to do it for us, but to right. take action. I mean, what you know, inner bonding is a six step process. Step five is, right. is, is taking it's action. Taking action. Yeah. And it, you know, it starts with being able to tune into our feelings and, and explore how we're treating ourselves and what our false beliefs are and then learning to go connect with our guidance about what's true and what's loving uh, taking the loving action my guidance is my higher as my role model because i realized when i started practicing inner bonding i didn't have any role models or you know they certainly weren't my parents or they weren't good role models they were not good role yeah. models for for, for self-love and so that's why i realized it was so important that i had to turn to a higher source for that role modeling and that's my role model is my higher power. So I go and say, okay, what's loving to me now? And then of course that's I have right. to take the action and that's step five. And then I go back in and see how does that feel? And if it feels good, I know that's, that's truly that's, loving to me. Right on. That's right on. I like the sentence in your book, other adults can help you, but they can only do it with you. They can't do it for you. Right. Could you explain that? A little bit? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, love from others feels great, but let's say that you, you have a partner who's being really loving to you, but you're abandoning yourself. You're judging yourself harshly. You're ignoring your feelings. You're shutting down with various addictions. You're, you're handing your inner child away to other people to take care of. You're going to feel bad inside when you're abandoning yourself. And then you feel unimportant. You feel unlovable. You can't take in somebody else's love when you're abandoning yourself. So, so other people trying to help you when you're judging yourself and ignoring yourself isn't going to do anything. But right. if you're having a really hard time and you want responsibility and you're, you're, you're tuning in and, and you, and you want to help yourself, but sometimes it may be, you know, a big issue where it's, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, uh, there, there may be a lot of, memories coming up from abuse or current situations that are challenging we reach out for help it's like i'm an adult but i need another adult to help they can't do it for me but they can support me in it and 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 with two loving adults there i can get through it but if i'm handing my inner child to that person while i, I mean that's part of self-abandonment there's nothing they right can do. There's, they they're powerless. They're powerless yes. over us. That's right. That's right. So again, it's yeah. about intention. If my intention is to love myself and I need some help, that help is going to be helpful. But if my intention is to completely abandon myself and make somebody else responsible, that's not going to be helpful. People can help you all they tr all they want. That's right. And, all, and they can try all they want, and it, or as I say, it goes to here and drops down. That's right. It, it just, won't, it can't go in. 
No, and no matter I, what I they do, no yeah, matter, no matter what, what they, they do, do, it's like not right, or it doesn't feel good, or, or you know, I'm still it's a victim, not enough. or it's not enough, no matter what they do, because it's never going to be enough if we're abandoning ourselves. What do you say to someone who says, I cannot access my inner child or my feelings? I'm an ACOA, adult children, child and alcoholic, or, and I, 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 don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm so, sure you've had that question a yes, thousand times. It's yes, I have. Well, first of all, sometimes people don't realize that their feelings are showing up physically. And so if I, you know, I ask them to breathe in and just tell me what's happening physically and they'll say, well, I feel tense in my stomach. Okay, that's a feeling. Absolutely. See, so they can feel, they just don't realize I, it. Like I feel you know, a headache. I yeah, feel, I feel a headache or my shoulders hurt or, okay. My that, throat that's is a, tight, the mouth is dry. That's or, right. So those are feelings. And that's information that we want to be tuning into and learning from. But sometimes um, you go inside and, and people feel nothing. They feel empty. Well, that's a feeling. Mm -hmm. Emptiness, aloneness, empty. nothing lets you know that there's complete self-abandonment going on. Um, but sometimes people are aware of what they're feeling, but they go inside to try and, and talk to their inner child and their inner child won't talk to them. And that's because they don't trust uh, there's no, there's not enough of a loving adult. And so then I encourage- Why would they want to talk? Why would yeah, they want to say Why would they? They feel betrayed. They feel abandoned. They feel alone and they don't trust that there's an adult who's going to care about them and, and, and listen to them and believe them and do something about it. So then I encourage people to work on, on their connection with their higher guidance and on developing their adult. Like if they were to I, I have them imagine adopting like a foster child who's been shuffled around or oh, abused. Oh, I love that. I, I even wrote that down. I love that. Uh, yeah. So they bring knowledge. in the foster child and the child is like, you know, well, who are you? And, you know, and no matter how wonderful and loving you might be, this kid is shut down, doesn't believe you, you know, has been betrayed. It's going to take consistency. Uh, it's going to take really being in your heart. Time. And, and time. Um, to prove yourself to the child. And that's and changing that's those inner adult intentions. Right. That's right. And so th that's what we have to do for <clears throat> ourselves. We, we need that practice. You know, the, the more we practice being a loving adult, the more we develop those neural pathways in our higher brain for the loving adult. And eventually it becomes much easier to operate as a loving adult. And then that inner child trusts that we're not just going to disintegrate into self-judgment or into, you know, grazing in front of the refrigerator or, or, you know, drinking or nicotine or TV or sports or sex or whatever, or pornography, whatever it is. We're not going to just go outside to numb out because all those are forms of self-abandonment. And you, I, I know you have probably kind of touched on this. Why is the unloved inner child always codependent? Well, like all children, the child needs love. I mean, there's nothing wrong with needing love. And so, I mean, all children need love. They, they don't thrive without love. They die without love. So our inner child is no different. That, that soul, that's our inner child, that feeling self always needs love. And if we don't give it to that child, it's going to become codependent with other people then we're on an eternal search. Right. And that's just right. a per perpetual search, maybe that's a better word. Yeah. Perpetual search for that, which won't work because we're not loving ourselves. So the love will come in and drop down again. It won't, it can't go in. We can't, right. we can't synergize with it. We can't do with it and do the with part. And wow. sometimes people, people say, well, it's, shouldn't that inner child grow up? And, and they're not understanding what the inner child is. Because to me, inner child is a metaphor. Because we, we know that we have to take responsibility for a child. But most people don't think about taking responsibility for their feelings. So to think of our feelings as an inner child is helpful. But it's not actually a child. Our soul is, right. is, is ancient. Right. Our, our soul is wise. And our soul often communicates through feelings. And so it's not a matter of growing up. 
Um, I mean, this is our this is our soul. This is our true self. This is the the beauty within us. This is where all our gifts are, and our aliveness, and our passion, and our creativity. So it's not a matter of growing up. It's a matter of nurturing this you know this aspect of ourselves so that we can be all we came here to be. I mean, we didn't come here just to squash ourselves. We came here to evolve in our ability to love and to manifest the gifts that we each have. And the only way we do that is when we're loving and nurturing who we really are. Would you consider it the inner adult growing up if they shift those intentions? Yes, well, that, that's different. It, is, I, is that a different, would you it, agree it, with it, that? It, yeah, yeah. So um, at any given moment, we're either either our wounded ego self, which is a program part of us that's in the lower part of the brain and the amygdala, where the fight or flight mechanism is. And we all develop this, this ego wounded self to, to have control and to try and be safe. But when that part of us is in charge, that part of us is like three or five or seven or 10, you know, it, it can be many ages an adolescent. Whereas most people don't even have a loving adult. When they start, when they come to me to practice inner bonding, they're operating out of that three-year-old or five-year-old or 10-year-old or 15-year-old. They're not operating out of a, see, to me, a loving adult is who we are when we're open to learning and we're connected with our, our higher guidance. And so that has to be developed. And then it's not even a matter of growing up because the wounded self doesn't grow up. The wounded self gets healed in terms of false beliefs because that's what it's operating on. Like the belief, I'm not good enough. <laughs> or God's supposed to do it for me, or I can control how people feel about me. We've got all these false beliefs. And, and so, I can't control my feelings and I can't right. control how I feel when other people do their behaviors. That's right, that's right. So false there's all beliefs. these false beliefs. And so we need to develop the loving adult part of ourselves and that takes practice. Uh, most of us just never saw anybody being a loving adult. Never saw anybody really taking responsibility for themselves. And I know your work involves helping people practice this in a six step way. And that anyone can go and find your book on inner bonding and learn about those six steps. <clears throat> How would you say that would differ from some of the other people who talk about inner bonding, such as Charles Whitfield or John Bradshaw or people that talk or inner, inner child work? inner child work. Yeah. Yeah. They don't call it inner bonding. No, it's, no. It's first of all, it's a pathway. It's a very definitive six step pathway, but secondly, it involves a spiritual connection, which mm -hmm. theirs don't. So that's vitally right. important because at some point I realized with my own psychotherapy that there, there's no true healing without a strong spiritual connection. Cause that's where love and truth come from. So if you don't have that, you just keep going round and round in the wounded part of yourself with your false beliefs. And so in inner bonding, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's a mind, body, spirit. Um, it's both, it, you know, it's intellectual, it's emotional and it's spiritual. And that's a vital aspect. That's very, very different than most other modalities. And I know you do workshops. How often do you do workshops or uh, can someone access those at any time? Um, well, um, I do have um, a recorded workshop. People can okay. go on the website and they can download the recorded workshop, the inner bonding workshop. Um, I, I, before COVID, I was traveling to various retreat centers to do workshops, but now I've been putting them online and they're fabulous. Um, I was doing um, uh, five day intensives three-day advanced intensive, I would go to, you know, a retreat center. I just finished an, an online, my fourth this year, online five-day intensive, and they're amazing online. I'm just stunned with what happens with Zoom. So I'm not sure yes. I'm going to be all that happy to go back <laughs> Thrilled to traveling. About traveling and all I know. And, and I, a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a, work. Yeah, it is. It's hard. And, and a couple of weeks ago, I did a weekend online workshop that was just amazing. I'm just amazed. There are some things you can do on Zoom that you don't do in person, like putting people into groups really quickly or having people, you know, ask questions on, on the chat or call out things on the chat. And so there's a lot of a lot of advantages. And many, many people have said to me, like just this last five day intensive, I love being in my home. 
when I go to a retreat, it's great. I feel, you know, happy and, and alive, but then like I like the home, interaction. Yeah. But then I come home and it's back to business as usual and I forget all about it. Whereas here doing it online, I'm, I'm having to deal with, you know, my partner, my kids, my work, whatever it is, the whole time I'm, you know, after or before the intensive, depending on where they live, because I've now got people from all over the world who couldn't come before. Right, who couldn't and come so, to Florida no. or California. Or yeah, yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, I had uh, somebody from Switzerland, somebody from the UK, last time somebody from Dubai, a couple people from Dubai. So, you know, it makes it available for them. And then they get to bring it into their life right then rather than right. you know, right. having to come back from a retreat. So I see a lot of advantages. I'm not sure the retreat centers are going to be that happy with me, but um, yeah, so <laughs> it's know. available. I, I, I also give online courses. I have a fabulous course called Love Yourself. People can sign up for it at any time. I have a bunch of other courses, Wildly, Deeply, Joyously in Love. People can sign up for that relationship course at any time, Attracting Your Beloved. Um, that's coming right up and, um, uh, passionate purpose, vibrant health. Um, I have one called unlocking your inner wisdom, which helps people to access their higher mm. guidance. So, um, mm. uh, so these are available for people at any time. I have, uh, uh, we have, um, inner bonding village, which helps support people. I have a fabulous right. online membership program called SelfQuest which teaches people the inner bonding process. So there's many, many ways, including I've the books. I've seen that, yes. Yeah. And I, I have sent many people your way. I'm so appreciative of that, Jerry. And Thank you so I much. I will continue to do that. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the workshops, yes, I've found, I've got a workshop coming up December 5th, uh, 2020, and it's on a Saturday. And you're right, I, you don't go anywhere anymore. You, yeah. you do it on Zoom and I love it. Yeah, I mean, it really is a wonderful process. Right. And, uh, and it, yeah, I don't have to do all the travel. I'm getting older. It's a lot of work to right. take everything and to take myself. And, right. And it's just yeah. nice to be able to do it in a comfortable environment. And then they can do it in their comfortable environment. That's right. It's great. You I'm, know, I'm it's... thrilled with the technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're probably not helping the conference centers, but and no. maybe we'll get back to that sometime in the future. Yeah, maybe. But one of them, one of them is worried. They sent me a survey and said, "So I want to know how you're doing with your online." And I said, "I'm doing great. I don't think they wanted to hear that." They don't know. It's just <laughs> been so difficult for a lot of people. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, we've come to the end of our time, and you've been so gracious to give me this time today and uh, and to answer my questions. Um, I wanted to, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with my viewers that would be of help or anything you've forgotten or I didn't ask you or you've talked about your program and I'm going to put all of your uh, contact information on the uh, YouTube uh, description. Yeah, so, so I really want to encourage people to start to practice step one of inner bonding, which is moving, it's a big journey, moving out of mind focus and into body focus, because this is where our inner child lives, where our feelings are in our body. Uh, and to practice, when I started to do this, I couldn't remember to get out of my head and into my body. So it right, took me it right. took practice. It is practice. Oh, it does yeah, so I practice. want to encourage people to practice tuning inside, practice getting present in their body with their feelings just that you're, you're they're going to find so much improvement when they just get present with their feelings and they and they want to learn from their feelings rather than avoid them and i wanted to share with folks uh, here's my copy of inner bonding uh dr margaret paul and uh your co-author it isn't she on there? No, 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 or, no, no, she's, she's not, not on, on. She's not on this one. I see. Yeah, but but I have, you know, I have I have the two recent books. That's an older book. I have the Diet for Divine Connection, and then I have the Inner Bonding Workbook, which is really good oh, for people to learn. Inner very bond. good. Yeah. And I just I got my I also have my copy of the Healing okay. Your Aloneness Workbook. I have the text. I just couldn't put my hand on it. Yeah. Uh, I love that. I I just I've always been one about to deal with healing your aloneness and how important that is. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. 
Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today and for listening. You've been kind and patient to listen to us today. And I hope you'll join my YouTube channel, Jerry Wise Relationship Systems, and please become a member of the YouTube channel as well. Dr. Margaret Paul, thank you so much for joining me today. You've been so kind to be here with us. Thank you so much, Jerry. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed our conversation very much. And you all have a great day and be wise.